Hey guys, um, I wanted to do a very quick video with regard to um, Mach 3, and, and I don't think it's a Mach 3 issue this, it's more a PC uh, issue that we have, and multiple parallel ports, and you'll see on the, on the table here, <coughs> I've got a few things, I have what they call Ethernet Smooth Stepper, and if you don't know what this is, this is effectively the replacement of these two parallel ports here. <clears throat> what this does is you have an ethernet cable that goes into here and then this actually has three ports on it but there's port one and then port two and these ports effectively are the two out ports of the parallel ports. What this allows is that you can get better rates because a PC uh, ethernet ports are only rated at, at sending out a certain frequency which you'd see in the Mac 3 where these can send out a whole lot more and then they, they can do some clever things. However, for the plasma work that I was doing, I had to move from this to two parallel ports. And I had some uh, bad experience with the parallel ports, which I'll talk about now, and how I overcame those. This, there were a couple of issues with it, which I can go into. Um, I think it's a great product. It just isn't great for the work that I was doing. Things, for example, that one struggled with, which I initially did, but is now fixed, is like homing uh, dual axes, if you have two motors per axis, which is definitely fixed. But from a plasma perspective, the thing that I struggled with the most was the delay in taking and switching the THC on. It just didn't work for me. No matter what I tried, I just I couldn't get it to delay. It kept on making the the um, arc or the, the torch dive. Um, I've got a hypertherm and it just it just wasn't working for me for that perspective and I just didn't want to break my hypertherm torch head so I moved to the parallel ports and that problem no longer exists for me by doing that. So very quickly these are obviously <coughs> this goes into the board here like that there and this is just a ribbon cable a ribbon cable and this ribbon cable then goes into your breakout board. I have two breakout boards I have one for the um, for moving the axes and then I have one for actually running the the plasma torch and the tool height control and stuff like that which I can share and show you guys if you would like. So here's the dish, the difficult that I had so let me move this out the way because it's no longer relevant to discuss that and if you want more information about the, the smooth stepper you're more than welcome to pop me a, a ping a ping me in, in, and I'll, I'll uh, answer your questions. The ethernet, uh, not the ethernet, but the parallel ports and the work that I was trying to do is I was trying to get the two of them to work on my PC. Now I don't have an old legacy machine, I've got an R3, it's relatively new, it's got 8 gigs of RAM in it, um, and I thought, you know, this will be good as golden. It wasn't the most expensive R3, but again, I'm just running it to run the, mach the, the, the CNC machine, so I thought, well, this will work great. It's got two uh, PCI, uh, PCI uh, E cards uh, slots in it, so it can handle both these parallel ports. However, when I installed them and I activated both of them, my Mac 3 would absolutely function horrendously badly. It would be very slow, it would jog and it would carry on jogging, it just, it was horrendous. Um, and I tried doing what I could, it just wouldn't work and I was pulling my hair out. What I eventually did is I thought, okay, if I take the one parallel card out and I just run it on a single one, it worked no problem, I didn't have any issues. I was like, maybe there's a faulty parallel, uh, the card's faulty. I had three of these cards and I tried all three of them and the same result. No matter how I turned and swapped the cables around, I thought it was maybe the breakout board. I still tried and it didn't work. It was definitely something in the PC and I talk about maybe from a hardware perspective or something in the PC. I'm running Windows 7. 32-bit um, obviously because you can't run 64-bit with these uh, with the driver the driver just won't initialize so you need to run 32-bit so that's what I did I like Windows 7 over XP it's just my personal preference needless to say I just couldn't get it to work on my on the board that I had on my PC and maybe it's a good idea to give you the spec of what my board is but on the board on my PC what I did have is an onboard ether uh, onboard parallel port which I disabled and thought if I disable that I would get a better experience using two separate cards. It didn't work. I then enabled it, and I then had to find it, which I did, and then I used one card. One card and the onboard parallel port. That fixed my problems. Problem solved. Now that for me just took trial and error and a couple of days of fault finding to eventually get to, get to that point. If I didn't have an onboard parallel port, all my parallel ports on my machine goes faulty for whatever reason. 
I'm going to be in a position where I'm going to need to buy a new PC because I cannot find a way of getting these two things to work and I don't know what it is. I think it's got to do with the amount of data that's going to the two cards that's causing a conflict. I reinstalled Windows, like I said, and I'm quite proficient with those things. Any case, so any, just some advice to you guys out there that are trying to do this, running separate parallel parallel card, running two parallel cards like this, if you find that it's slow and delayed, the recommendation and advice for me to give you guys is to actually run the onboard parallel card and then to physically run one of these as your secondary card. And that seemed to give me the most joy and the most throughput in terms of speed and my machine now runs quite smoothly. You'll notice in the beginning of the video I've got my plasma table running and doing a bit of a cut there. That is running with um, two parallel cards. So guys, thank you very much. There are a couple of other things I want to go through. As you can see, my table's got lots of little holes in it. Um, I'm using this for a camping, this is for when I do routering, I use this for some camping. I've got some camping methods that I used uh, to do a little job. Um, I've got a piece of wood here, I'll show you very quickly the picture. Um, <coughs> so, I've just routed out a piece of wood like that and then we have obviously this just goes in as a bit of a reset and a coin goes in there. In actual fact I'm from Africa, so a coin that will go in there will be a Kruger Rand. So, and it'll just be done nice, it won't be left like this. We'll put nice, a nice finish on that with some satin and, and so on it goes. So that's just to give you an idea of what it looks like. But as you can see, there's not a lot of meat to play with to hold this stuff down. And I had to actually hold it on the table. And if you guys are interested, I can do a quick video about the, the jig and the rig that I set up to do this, to hold it down and to actually give me the camping force that I needed to in order to cut these um, properly. I did make a bit of a booboo on the first one. and ended up making a hole right through the bloody wood. So... I'm happy to show and share that with you guys. Um, I am going to do another video a little bit later about um, grounding of your CNC machine and then the, and doing grounding cables and maybe just a bit of ground looping and what that's all about and using cable that have sh that has shielding on it and and how to to ground those properly and to show you the effect on my machine of the difference between it being grounded and not grounded well. Guys, thank you very much. Um, again, short, sharp, and to the point. Um, didn't want to map and bore you guys. Cheers.